All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be doing a computer maintenance type video. We're going to be working on this IBM Enterprise Grade UPS, Uninterruptible Power Supply. This is uh, running some of the stuff for my business. There's a couple of different microservers and disk stations connected to this guy. And the problem, if we zoom in up here on the LCD screen, what we've got is a situation where um, you can see it's got an alarm. And if we go take a look at what the problem is, it's reporting that the battery, the internal battery test has failed. I've reset this and I've ran it manually and it consistently fails. So it's time to change the batteries in this unit. So before we can really do anything with it, we're going to go take a look at the service manual for it. This is a 53, looks like 5396. There's several different flavors of this guy. Um, this is the 1000 VA level. There's also a 15 VA level. But I think there's three different models. I'll put that down in the description. But let's go take a look at the service information before we get started. All right, guys, so let's take a quick look at the, the manual for this. So you'll see that even though we're showing this hosted at a Lenovo.com website, it's an IBM manual. IBM sold the business that included these UPS units to Lenovo back at the beginning of 2014, 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. So let's take a look at the replacing the battery step. So we'll go, go down to the, uh, the maintenance information section replacing the battery. There's a bunch of cautions up here. I'll scroll slowly through these cautions. Obviously there's the chance of a short and a chance of causing damage, irreparable damage to the unit if you don't do this correctly. Obviously these are lead acid batteries. A whole bunch of stuff that you can pause and slow down and read this. I'm going to pick this right up at the instructions piece. All right. So we're not going to want to do this while the UPS is in battery mode. So we got to make sure we're on AC power before we do this step. And then we're going to we're going to do it the hard way rather than the qualified personnel way. We're going to go down and we're going to hold the on-off button until it shuts the unit down. We're going to wait 60 seconds for everything internal to power down. Then we're going to remove this front cover by pressing on these two tabs that are shown here and here. This guy's going to just flip up and lay on top of the unit just like we see there. Got to be careful not to damage. There's going to be a ribbon cable I'll show you. Got to be careful not to damage that. Then there's a thumb screw that we can see down here that's holding this cover. Right? So we're going to come down. There's a picture of that thumb screw. We're going to remove that thumb screw so no tools required. And then we're going to lift up and pull this guy off. Once we pull this guy off, it's going to reveal the main power connector between the batteries and the board. We're going to disconnect these two. And then there's a tab on the front of the battery module and we're going to pull the battery module out of the unit. At this point, you'll be reversing all of this to put it back together again. I'll show all that, but I'll scroll through this so you can see. They make a note about when you hook up the new battery, you might see some arcing, sparking. That's normal. Push in, slide down, retighten the thumb screw when you put the cover back on, and then re snap in this front cover. There's two little slots that this has to fit into, and then it swings down and snaps back into position. The other thing they, uh, and then the bottom here, they, they talk about testing a battery, but before I go through that, there's a couple of service bulletins. This applies to both the 100 volt unit, and they got the same exact bulletin for the 230 volt unit. These are both the same 5396 models. If we go down the bottom, it's just simply telling you that whenever you replace one battery, you got to replace them all. So if one cell's bad, all the cells have to be replaced. You can't mix them. So there's just a bunch of things here about why you cannot mix old and new batteries together. And then they talk about after you're all done, there's a series of steps to bring everything back up. So you bring all your servers back up or whatever the loads are one at a time. And then on the LCD screen, they walk you through the instructions for resetting the fault code that got you into this repair in the first place. So once you've done this, I'll pop back over to the manual and then you can go through and test the new battery. Right here's the steps. I won't read them off to you. You can read that yourself and that'll complete the, pr the procedure. All right, now that we know the procedure from the service information, let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna hold this white power button in. It's gonna be a long beep. We're gonna wait three seconds until it goes into standby mode. They didn't mention that in the manual, but that's what's happening. Then we're going to unplug this unit from the AC power on the wall, and we're going to wait 10 seconds for it to power down. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, we're in standby mode. Now we're going to come back here. We're going to pull the plug out of the wall. And now we're going to wait for it to shut off. It should take about just 10 seconds. There we go. Now it's safe to open up. I'm going to refill down here for those tabs. I can feel them here and here. We're going to push in, lift it up. There they are right there. And when you push them in, it just releases on both sides. There's the ribbon cable. There's a ton of dust we're going to want to get cleaned off on here while we're in here as well. There's our thumb screw. Go ahead and turn that lefty loosey. And then we should just be able to lift up and pull this off. And there's our paint, our, our main power connector for the battery. And then here's our little pull tab for the battery module. And there's our battery module. So we can take this guy and I'll show you inside here. You can see there's two SLA batteries from Yuasa, looks like. Yeah. I'm going to show you what we're replacing these with. And then we'll have to retain this kind of carrier and this wiring harness to put it back in. But before we do that, I'm going to take a moment to get all of this dust vacuumed out of here that's causing inefficiency in the cooling system. So get all this cleaned off, and then I'll show you what we're replacing this with. All right, guys. So the batteries, the two batteries that are in this model um, are uh, Yuasa NPW45-12. This isn't made anymore, but here's the data sheet on it. So this is an NPW4512, all the specs. The most relevant specs for what you'll replace this with is the length, width, and height with the terminals. So 151 by 65 by around 98 millimeters. And then this needs to be Faston F2 type terminals that are 6.35 millimeters wide. I'll show you that. And the layout needs to be, when you're looking at the battery, negative on the left, positive on the right. That's the, the main thing. Now the battery that was in here, that IBM and Lenovo originally used, was replaced by this guy. So this would be basically the same battery with the current number, NP7.5-12. This is just a basic sealed lead acid battery. Has the same layout, negative on the left, positive on the right. You can get it in the 0.25 or the F2 width terminal that I was mentioning. It also comes in a smaller terminal. That one won't work for this application. It has to be the F2 terminal. And that, that would be fine. That would be an equivalent to this. But a better upgrade to this would be instead of the NP series, the NPX series from Yuasa is specifically designed for UPS applications. So it's a little bit more expensive. And so the one that would meet all these specifications about the size and everything would be the MPX35. So this is the batter, one of the batteries I'd recommend. So the MPX series, the 35, is going to fit in with these dimensions. And it's going to have the right negative left, positive right. And it's going to have the F2 type terminals spade terminals and that's going to work fine another battery i'd be fine recommending and in fact the one i'm actually going to use because this one was out of stock at all the places i would normally get it at is a power sonic phr 1236 and again you're looking at the height the width and the um, um, length and you're looking at negative on the left positive on the right and f2 type width terminals so with that those are the two batteries i'll show you this all you have to do, there's this model, if it's, if it's a 5396 machine type from IBM or Lenovo, and then the three digits or three characters after that is the model. If the first character is a one, it's going to have two batteries. If the first character in that model number is a two, then it's going to have three batteries. And I'll put a picture up here on the right what the three battery model looks like. To get this apart, it's real simple. We're just going to take some scissors and cut this tape. So all it is is a couple of uh, plastic trays that hold this stuff together. There's one down here on the bottom too. I don't know, maybe we can leave that one alone. Let's see if we can leave that one alone. And then we're going to be able to pull these out of this plastic. Get this old tape over there. All right. And then the terminals just wiggle off. The 
there, and there. And then what I was going to show you on here, this is an F2 type terminal, negative on the left, positive on the right. Just take a look at that, you can see 6.38-ish millimeters wide, right? An F1 terminal would be significantly smaller than that and would not work. So, like I said, I'm going to be going with the PowerSonic PHR1236s. This is a high data rate battery. Um, don't know if I actually held this up long enough for you to see, but this is a specifically designed for UPS. So it's a high rate discharge type battery. So you can't just use a regular battery and expect it to last as long when you end up having to actually go on a blackout and you need your UPS to perform. This is the kind of battery you want either this one or that uh, NPX35 that I showed earlier. I'll put links in the description where you might find some of these. So we're just going to put these on now so that we don't misplace the polarity. And we'll just go grab this other guy. Do the same thing. Negative. Positive. positive and negative. Just take your time in doing this part because you get them messed up, that would be bad. All right. Put the bottom back in first. And we'll put the top in. Find out where it'll be happy in the plastic again. And we're just going to replace the tape. That's, that's all there is to it. The hardest part of this is finding an appropriate battery. In this case, it's an upgrade what was in there. Either the two batteries I mentioned would be an upgrade. I'm going to get this dusty old tape off of here. All right. Sorry about the creaking on our little table here. It's making quite the racket. And then holding this guy nice and taut. We're just going to put some new scotch tape on this, pull it nice and tight, and that's it. She is ready to go back in. Now if the bottom is not in good shape, this would be a time to replace that, but other than that, this is all this is to this battery module. So let's go back up, put it back in the unit, and show how to get it reset and charged up. All right, we got all this vacuumed out, so now we can just put the new module, or the module with the replacement batteries rather, Back in its home. And get it reconnected. Whoops. This way. Thumb screw back in. These little uh, curved clasps here go in these slots at the top. Get it snap back in, and then we're going to reconnect the main power to the AC and let it power up. All right. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, she's on. We got to get rid of this battery test fail from last time. So, on this, we want to go down to control. Want to schedule the battery test? Yes. OK, 
Okay. Let's make sure that took. And then we want to, so yeah, we want to leave that alone. So battery test is pending. So I think that got rid of our error now. Now what we're going to have to do is let it charge all the way up before we can start powering on our loads. So I won't keep you guys there for that. We're basically done with this. So we're going to let it go all the way up. We'll make sure that after it gets fully charged, we can get everything powered up. We'll go ahead and run another battery test to make sure our new batteries are good. But that's basically it. That's how you change the batteries out in an IBM Lenovo 5396, whether it be the uh, 1000 volt amp model like this one or the 1500 volt amp model. I'll put links in the description for some technical information about these as well as these batteries. So if you've got questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help. If you found this video useful and it helped you get your old UPS back up and running, Appreciate you taking the time to hit that thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.